<laughs> Welcome back to This Takes the Cake. Um, we are super excited and honored. I have my good friend Jen here from EventWorks. She's one of our besties, go-tos, texting all days on Saturdays. Hey, I need this or great job or whatever is happening. Um, and we're super excited to talk to you about all the crazy things that you get to see that we don't always get to see. Um, so tell me, how did you get into the industry? Well, um, I started catering when I was 17 uh, at a Spanish theater in um, Southern California. And uh, from there, I just stayed in the food and beverage business, hospitality. And um, around, I think when I was 21, I moved to Northern California and started uh, catering there at the Culinary Institute of America, and then became the service manager, and then became the wedding planner. Oh, and wow. <laughs> yeah, and did that, I think, my first wedding I did, I was 24 years old, so it was... Oh, uh, wow. Was, okay. Yeah, it's been... So did you help plan from start to finish there with mm -hmm. your clients? Mm -hmm. It was all on-site, which was okay. way easier than what we do now with, you know, being that I do the rentals now with tents and stuff. It's like we're creating a whole venue <laughs> right. instead of just being on-site, which is always easier. So was client. everything like in-house where mm -hmm. you were? Pretty much. I had to order linens separately, and then we had some event design companies that would come in and do, you know, specialty stuff and oh. drape the ceiling and all cool. of that. But uh, back in the, the Pintuck and Candelabra days. <laughs> I love some Pintuck. No, I'm kidding. Um, that's cool. So do they still do weddings there? Or they do, you? do. Cool. They do, yeah. It's a, like a 15,000 square foot Oh, wow. um, barrel room it used to be a winery the christian brothers winery there so it's a huge castle basically which is pretty intimidating being a kid and um you know planning weddings it was right. really interesting i'm doing hundred thousand dollar weddings and uh, <laughs> my first wedding actually uh this couple had been together for 13 years and they were in a motorcycle accident and the bride had lost her leg so i'm wow. 24 and they're like Okay, she's she's like, well, can I ride a horse down the aisle? My first wedding <laughs> ever as a wedding planner. I was like, <laughs> I love it. Um, well, let me check and see. You know, we're school, so I'm not really sure. And and she had said uh, that her prosthetic leg with her high heel hurt to wear long distances, and so she didn't. And the the aisle was super so long, long where we'd had the ceremonies. And then um, also they were vegetarians. And so we had a <laughs> yeah. A this minimum. is interesting. <laughs> we had a minimum for uh, for to have the wedding there, and they only had like ninety people, I think. And so they ended up doing like eight courses or something like that. O M G. All, <laughs> all vegetarian, and uh, it was. I mean, we ended up having like dessert plates made out of sugar with. Uh, marzipan fairies <laughs> and mushrooms <laughs> and the like petty fours on it it was it was pretty interesting but you can't ever forget that wedding that that definitely takes the cake <laughs> I never heard <laughs> that does, one that's right <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh so I've I've been in the industry for quite some time right that's awesome okay so how did you get from California to South Carolina I uh, I had some family stuff and uh my my mom had moved back here I think like 25 years ago okay my grandmother was from Mullins. Oh, okay. And uh, my mom had fond memories of Myrtle Beach as a child. So she had moved back here. And then um, 10 years ago, my brother was in a motorcycle accident. And so I left and came here to here. be with family. Right. You know, it's hard when you live so far away. Sometimes you, you know, I'd say things like, what if an emergency happened? It'd take me, it would take me a whole day to get uh, yeah. there. And then it did, <laughs> so For I real. stayed. <laughs> yeah, that's it was awesome. Easier. All so. right, so tell me, how long have you been with EventWorks? I've been with EventWorks for four and a half years wow, now. It's already been that long. Yeah, that's crazy. right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> From catering at Inlet Affairs that's to crazy. going to EventWorks. That's awesome. Yeah, so we've been working with EventWorks ever since they they came here um, from Charleston. So I guess probably 12, 11 years. How long have you guys been here? I think it's. Yeah, it's probably close to that now, yeah. 10 or so. Yeah. I definitely, uh. when I look up Stunning and Brilliant on our, on our contract <laughs> system, if I have to look at something in the history, I'm like, oh, God, the history is so long, just scrolling through all, all right. of these events. Well, and seeing, like, yeah. year after year how many more events you're doing is crazy. I know. We are crazy. 
Yeah, well, I remember I used to always have to go to Charleston to get anything because it was like one or two little mom and pops here, and they didn't really have the up-to-date trendy things. And I remember I would go to event works, and Corey yeah. would be the one to deliver. The it first event the works employee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's the first employee of event works, and he's still with them, which is awesome. And it was when the the white leather lounge oh, yeah. was it, you know, super in, so they mm-hmm. would they would bring it up here, and then. I don't know, it just kind of started to happen. I was like, Mike, I need you to come to Myrtle Beach, like, you know. So yeah. that's 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 really cool. So Eventworks has a new specialty boutique division um, that's called Crush. Right. And I had the honor to go to Atlanta last fall to go see that. So tell me a little bit more about Crush and all that it offers. And Well, Crush is more of our um, specialty boutique division, like you said, right? Um, we offer uh, elevated furniture, bars, you know, all of that kind of those those items that really make an event special and unique. Um, and like, I mean, we had one recently with Crush and they actually painted the bar for us. We gave them the literally the paint swatch and they painted it. And I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. Looking <laughs> at their like bars and furniture is just, it's so cool, but it's more specialized. It's not something like we're the the largest rental company in the Southeast, event rental That's company amazing. in the Southeast. <laughs> so uh, we have quite an inventory. But when it comes to these really nice pieces, it's not something that we can have in, in mass quantity, you know. So Right, of course. You can go there, and it's not something that in this area that there is a lot of. So we're super excited um, to bring that to our coast, and um, our website should be up soon. It's coming soon right. um, but uh yeah it's just it's it's gonna bring events to a whole new level yeah I mean some of the stuff they brought recently to a wedding we did I mean it was just had it was custom you know like they mm-hmm. painted it exactly the they picked out the paint swatch from you know the paint store and sent it to them and they literally it was a custom piece you yeah. know but it is still a rental which is nice so you don't right you're actually paying to own for it you know and they so. have like special ways they clean the furniture and how they handle it and the guys are supposed to do this and that you know so um yeah it's it's going to be awesome and yeah no they did they did a great job with the one that we recently had them at um is it Paul is mm-hmm. that his name yeah, yeah he was awesome so he came and he had his little cart he had all his little cleaning supplies little touch up paint i was like wow this is you know, like you said, it's an elevated experience. Um, right. I mean, obviously, white padded chairs, all your basic rentals, obviously, you know, sure. Eventworks offers. But if you really want to take it to that next level, you know, Crush is really mm-hmm. the go-to option. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Um, and I know there's some minimums involved, obviously, for that. But, I mean. There's minimums for everyone. <laughs> right. <laughs> and all yeah. of them keep going up no. everywhere. No, so. for sure. So you might not have an exact answer for this, but is there um, a way or knowing how far out couples should need to look or book their rentals? I mean, I would say in an ideal world, um, a year out would be good, but a year to that six months mark is um, really, if being that we have such a large inventory, we do have the ability to take orders closer to the event, but with how much like weddings have increased in these last couple years, right. you can only keep up with it so much. So the earlier you get it in, you want to make sure that you have like the specific items that you want, that you have to have at your event reserved, reserved. and then you can kind of go from there. But even looking at six months, you know, you're looking at April for booking for October, that's still pretty close when you look at those peak wedding seasons. Right. I mean, you guys only have so many tents. I mean, I'm sure... White padded chairs are probably I mean, unlimited. We have thousands, <laughs> yeah. Of white padded but like chairs, a cell call tent, I'm sure there's only so many you right. have of those. So right. like, especially if you're planning a big tented outdoor event, I mean, I definitely agree with you. You know, minimum of six months out, but a year yeah. is nice. Yeah. I mean, anytime a year we have the a, ideal. Anytime you know we have a client, we might not know what's going under the tent, but I'll shoot you an email and be like, "Hey, can we reserve?" Right. A 44 by 123 cell call tent for you know next June. Right. So that way I know it's. That part's secured. Well, and here in our area, you know, a lot, so many of the venues are outdoor venues, and you never know what the weather is going to be like in this area. Like, nope. <laughs> never. <laughs> it, you know, people always ask about um, rain plans. and Yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> so what we Everyone do... Everyone needs one. <laughs> everyone needs a rain plan, because literally you never know nope. if it's going to rain or not. Like, 
people will be like, oh, well, I've been following the Farmer's Almanac, and and it doesn't rain in April. Like, okay, well, and then it rains, you know. Um, yeah, monsoons. Yeah, we see the most of it, though, I feel like in our fall wedding season. And mm-hmm. so with our rain plan, that gives – the couples the ability to wait until the week of the event to decide whether they want the tent or not and you know being that the weather is so temperamental here we've had weekends where it didn't look like it was going to rain at all until like two days before the wedding and then and then everyone's calling us for tents from from Georgia from North Carolina you know and at that point all the tents are booked, <laughs> right. which is pretty intense because then you're looking at potentially the labor to, to even to put it all up. Yeah. The labor and then even potentially having to move your event. If you don't have a tent, you know, what are you going to have 200 people just out in the open? <laughs> Do you remember, I think it was last year, it was a wedding we did with you guys and they had a tent, but it mon- it was in June. And it monsooned. And I remember I texted you a photo. Your dance floor yeah. was underwater. Yeah, it had like a couple <laughs> inches of water on it. It was the <laughs> craziest thing I've ever seen. Didn't you guys go in the house and get the carpet? Yeah, from we the got rugs to put it on there. Yeah, because we didn't want it to be a liability of people slipping and sliding on the dance floor. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, even if you do have a tent, sometimes, like like you said, moving locations is sometimes right an option. You know, if if possible, because sometimes the the tent doesn't, I mean, if it's blowing sideways and 40 miles an hour, yeah. you know, it's not going to. It's not going to do much for no. you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you can put sidewalls on it. And, and then, there you go. That's good. <laughs> right? Yeah. So even with rain plans, I mean, I'm sure this has happened before. Like, what is, like, protocol for you can't put a tent up, like, wind-wise? Because I've seen the boys struggle sometimes trying to get tents up because of the wind. Yeah. I, I know one time we, <laughs> <laughs> what was it? It was recently, actually, and, um guys were like Jen we're having a hard time putting up the tent and I was like oh gosh are you guys just being babies you know <laughs> and then I think Don had sent the the video <laughs> of it and the sailcloth is like I mean there's a reason it's like it's a, a sail <laughs> yeah. yeah and it's blowing and I, I think the wind gusts were like 30 miles an hour that day which the tent the tent can withstand that but putting it up Trying in those wind up. conditions can be extremely difficult right yeah people don't realize like Yeah, the wind. I mean, you know, if you're carrying something outside and the wind's blowing, it can kind of move you. So I can't imagine trying to put up a And I mean, so much goes into it. I mean, our stakes are four and a half feet long, you know, and the guys are sledgehammering on them and jackhammering them. And it's, it's, it's really an amazing process. Right. No, I agree. So uh, we have some couples that come to us and they're like, should we buy this? Should we rent this? And I'm all about renting because I'm like what are you gonna do with 200 chargers after an event right you know and then they're like oh would you like them I'm like nope (laughs) um so why should brides rent versus purchase I mean I feel like just what you said like what are you gonna do with it after or people are like well you know I I can buy all this china from I've been purchasing all these different patterns from thrift stores and this and that well then you're gonna have to make sure they're clean for your and sterilized for your guests then you're going to have to store them, clean them again. Uh, the best part for me about rentals, especially like with China, is you don't have to do the dishes. Like right. you put them back in the racks and we take them and do it and it's done, which is my favorite part about right. that. But it's the same thing with linens, like, or tablecloths. <laughs> but I never you know, want to wash tablecloths no. and dry them and hang them. No, it's awful. And, and people always want to buy them online. But when you're looking at larger events too when you have like 30 40 50 tablecloths what are you going to do with those and for us we have industrial washers we have a whole linen press it takes two people to press one linen (laughs) through the linen press then we hang them we bag them I mean it's a whole process Mm -hmm. it is a whole process and we'll get to that in a minute because I definitely want to talk about like behind the scenes because people have no idea why something costs so much, and then they see behind the scenes, you're like, oh, wow. Um, but back to renting versus purchasing, I mean, I mean, I think just like you said as well is, well, they show your your staff, your, you know, event work staff, they show up, they set it all up, mm-hmm. and then they come back and they break it all down. And if you're renting it, I mean, or purchasing it, 
I mean, you're going to be the one that has to take it and then come back and right. get it and all those things, you know. Or I don't know how many times people have purchased their own linens and then they go to put it on the table, even though, you know, we may coach them through the right sizes for the tablecloths, the linens, and then they go to put them on the table and they don't fit right. Or and they have a thousand color. creases in them. Yeah. That a steamer won't even get out. Yeah. I mean, I. Because they've been in a bag from China <laughs> for five years. <laughs> I mean, we've had so many calls from people so often who purchase their own linens that are like, well, what do you have um, today? <laughs> and I go on the back. In lilac. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I have this. What do you think about this? Which, I mean,. I'm sure that does happen a lot, and you guys have such great inventory that you could give them a linen that maybe is a little bit bigger, which I'd rather see a linen puddled versus, sure. you know, too short. Well, and like we were talking about in the <laughs> earlier 2000s, it was uh, much more popular to puddle, right? Right. Like on yeah. a 60-inch round, you would use a 132-inch round tablecloth and tuck it under, where now it's more of that just level. Clean, yeah, mm-hmm. right there at the, the floor. Um, we like to say the kiss. It oh. just kisses the floor. Okay. I'm so. going to use that from now on. Even the chair. The chair just kisses the linen. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I always get hung up between ground and floor, but now we're kissing. We're kissing. Yeah. We're kissing. It's great. So let's go back to behind the scenes because a lot of times when we bring clients in, we get to go take a little little tour. Yeah. Where and the magic happens. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and people, and I really do like to take people back there. Mm-hmm. So they really do see like behind the scenes of like, why this charger is five dollars, or why these forks are dollar fifty, or whatever? Because I mean, they they even bag them in, in um, is it tens? Yeah, and they seal ten. them. Uh-huh. So and tell then, me about the, all those processes. So with our dish area, I guess since we can start there, um, each piece comes in a pack of ten, and then so they're bagged, and then they're put into a little case that there's a hundred and fifty per case. Then they're tagged. Once they've been counted, then they tag it. It's kind of like a bread tie, you know, and it's labeled what it is. And, I mean, those things, you're looking at even just that's like three cents a piece for a tag, you know. Right? So when you have thousands of pieces, it definitely adds up. And, um, and the labor of having somebody sit there and count that, that would be very tedious. Absolutely. Wash it, count it, bag it. I mean, it's a whole thing. And especially – in these uh, post-COVID times as wages have increased for everyone, right, you know, yeah. I, I mean, you see the price increases everywhere. Those are things that we've had to work with and deal with and, you know, why our prices are what they are right now. Yeah, I mean, it's hard work what the girls and guys do yeah. there. I mean, even our glassware too, when, so they wash the glasses and the racks, then they buff them, then they put them in a bag and put them back on the shelf and it, You know, our tents, we have, in our Charleston office, they have a a tent cleaner. It's like a giant washer, like as big as your sign, bigger than this sign here. And um, in Myrtle Beach, our guys all do it by hand. Yeah, they lay it out. Yeah, they lay it out. Literally. And sometimes, like the other day, I walked into the warehouse, and it's like hanging from the ceiling, (laughs) drying in different ways. It's like a ghost hanging in there. Yeah, it's just, (laughs) it's crazy. It's the guys, and you know, people don't think about the weather as well. Like right now, it's 100 degrees outside with 100% humidity, and my guys are There's no AC back there. (laughs) No, there's no AC back there. And then even when they're out on events, like these guys are working hard. It's hard manual labor. In an environment when you don't even want to walk to your car. (laughs) Right, exactly. (laughs) So You've cranked your car with your uh, remote before you get in it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they just, they do a, a fantastic job and I always say, like, I was never a cook because I can't deal with the heat in the kitchen, and that's exactly the same thing in the back. Like, I walk into the warehouse, and I'm freezing from the showroom air conditioning. I'm like, I can't take the heat. I got to get out of the kitchen. (laughs) No, it is so crazy. And, like, the whole linen process, like, I mean, so they have to wash, Mm -hmm. and then do they dry, or do they go immediately through the press? Some dry, some don't. Depends on the fabric. Yeah, yeah, like the Panamas, I think those actually go in when they're damp. Um, but uh, and then that it makes takes, sense. Yeah, and then it's two people to hold each side, stretch it out, feed it through the linen press, which has like a it's a huge roller. Yeah, and then imagine the linen people in a hot warehouse as well at a, a linen press, press yeah. that's producing heat on top of it. Like, 
I mean, th- they're doing a great job, but you know, we're so busy that sometimes there'll be seven, eight bins full of linens, and they're just pressing, pressing, pressing. Oh, I've seen it. I'm like, oh boy. We have a smaller linen press too, where they can do the napkins, napkins and all yeah. of that. But it's just, it's really, really tedious. And you know, sometimes just even trying to get the stains out of linens, like. God forbid somebody has blue icing on a cake. Like we right. are bleaching and <laughs> rerunning and or wax, you know, things or like that. Red it's, wine or any yeah, of those things. Yeah, but uh, but we can get it out. It just takes some time. Talk to me about candle wax. It doesn't come out, right? <laughs> Not really. It can though. It can? Yeah, okay. yeah. Um you know, obviously we'd prefer not to have it on there. And sometimes right. when there's a lot, it can make a difference. But um, but but we can definitely work with that. It's not like we're taking a credit card and trying to scrape the, the wax off. So, Jen, how helpful it is, would you say, coming into Event Works, having a planner versus just a couple coming in? Let's just say they're having an outdoor tented wedding here, you know, in the area. Tell me how it is. I mean, obviously, we bring clients in and we walk them through the process. But when someone comes in without a planner, like, is that really, like, hard? It can be difficult. <laughs> um, we definitely love having planners because <laughs> a lot of times when people don't have a planner, especially if it's a larger event, they're almost looking to us to kind of help plan. And obviously, we're the rental company, and we're going to help you as much as we can. We of can course. coach through through sizes of tablecloths or, you know, say, okay, well, a dance floor, you need four square feet per person, you know, to kind of develop those sizes. Yeah. But there's just, there's so much more that goes into it, which makes us appreciate you guys. (laughs) And uh, I mean, it's, it's nice that we know a lot of the venues and, and what they need from us and when we can deliver and when we have to pick up and what they expect but oftentimes when it's more at a private residence or something, when we don't know. Don't know anything. Yeah, yeah. it's it, and planners are just there to pay attention to the details, execute, like keep all of the vendors in line, which is so nice. It's not like I have to call the DJ or I have to call this person to make sure right. that they um, are going to be there at a certain time or, no, you can't decorate it this time because this is when we're putting up the tent. It's just um, – it, it's. I feel like having a planner is super important. Well, yeah, I mean, especially on the rental side, because I'm sure if they don't come in and they don't have a planner, I mean, do they have ever said to you, like, well, how many tables do I need? Yeah, yeah. And you're like, well, I, I don't go, know. Are well, you having a plate of dinner, a station? Sta- yeah, exactly, you- exactly. And, <laughs> you know, do you want everyone seated? Do you not? Well, a 60-inch round table typically And then how many people, people does that seat? Yeah, <laughs> and then I'm doing the math or, you know, well, have you thought about – Maybe you need some cocktail tables. Well, what do I need cocktail tables for? Well, for people to put their drinks on around the dance floor or in the right. cocktail hour, you know. And, and in this day and age, I feel like that cocktail concept is a lot more prevalent than it of used course. to be. Like, yeah. people aren't just se- sitting or seating the whole party, you right. know. it's Absolutely. There's a lot of that partial seating and then cocktail tables or conversation tables, Um which is fun, but, like, those are things that, the ideas that I have versus a planner being like, okay, what are your ideas? Here's your, you know, brainstorming board right. or vision board. like Or a rough layout to right. get them going. Right. So when we do come into a vat works, we're like, okay, well, we need eight 60-inch rounds. We need these bars, these bar backs, these lounge. We yeah. need I go, okay, okay great. Yeah, <laughs> right. Or I think probably the hardest part, and I still not struggle, but I have to like really focus is like how much glassware to get, how many forks. Like I don't know if that'll ever be like an easy thing. It's not, and a lot of it depends on the group. And and yeah, you are know, they, are you cocktail drinkers? Are you beer drinkers? What are you guys serving? You know, or are you having a champagne toast at the table? Or are you just mm-hmm. passing? Like yeah. that's a huge difference in glassware if you have it served at the table versus what you're doing at the bar. Or, you know, we really increased um, the glassware count for events during COVID because if you set your glass down then, people weren't picking their glasses back right. up, yeah. like, at all. So we would see um, a lot more use at that time, which, right. you know, yeah. same with napkins. Like, we were encouraging people to 
uh, order extra napkins because if somebody dropped it, you know, then they don't want to yeah. reuse it again. It was a, a crazy time, but, you know, we're easing out of that now. But um, those are always things that I think about as well. I go, well, how many times am I at an event when I put my glass down and I go, well, I don't know where it is now. Let me just, just go get, get another one. one, you know, yeah. like. It, and people are like, well, can't they just reuse the glass? But when you think about it like that, like, right. Yeah. And then if you have good service as well, like they're going to be like, okay, abandon drink. Let me pick that up and bust it and get it out of the way. So, right. Yeah. I always say over order on all that stuff. Absolutely. I mean, cause you don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. and even if they have RSVPs at 150, then you've got your vendors, you know, you have other things involved or they want extra. Right. So right. always over order on those things for sure. So recently we had an event for SMB and we had just a little small tent for the band and uh, weather looked great all week. And then that morning I looked and I was like, oh boy, I get to call Jen. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Jen, you got any tents? <laughs> She's like, what you need? <laughs> uh, thankfully it was a weekday, so it wasn't that hard. Um, and I mean, literally I told her what we needed, the sizes, the barrels, we talked about water how we're going to fill them up all these logistical things and I mean her crew was here within like two hours to put it yeah. up it was awesome yeah um and I, and we always tell people like we exclusively use event works for that reason because of the relationship we have and we can make those phone calls and and make things happen like well and that is the nice part like with you guys and with a lot of the planners that we work with often is like everyone's got each other's cell phone numbers you know right if if something's forgotten or, you know, I've had someone be like, oh, my God, how did I forget? I didn't even order a dance floor. I'm like, all right, I got you. Like, right. let's do this. Okay, guys, how are we going to make it? And I think our industry is so tightly knit. It is. Um, someone once said that in this area we were the wedding mafia, and they're like, all of you guys know everyone, like the caterers, <laughs> the planners, <laughs> right. event works. Like we just we're all so connected that um, I think it really makes us – successful in producing great yeah. events no and I agree and I have to say between the other cities like our city is city whatever you want to call it um <laughs> is rural so, South rural, Carolina yeah. <laughs> it is so different like yeah. we're like a team like if Absolutely. you forgot something I got you if something happens I'm covering you mm -hmm. um and I do want to tell this story because I always tell this a lot of times at consultations for people to book us and to book event works so we had a wedding, um, and I, I'm sure you're going to remember, it was at Brook Green Gardens, and it was in September, and we had no tent. We were in Palomino Gardens, beautiful, we were at the church, she was getting married, the girls called me, and they were like, it's pouring. I'm like, what do you mean it's pouring? And I'm, I was like, send me a video, you know, sometimes <laughs> we, we, you know. Right. And they literally sent me a video, and they're like, wringing out the water on the linens. And I was like, oh boy, that's not good. <laughs> Because we have 250 guests coming in like an hour. Right. So we texted Jen, and I'm not sure if you brought them. I, don't I know. brought them. You brought them. Okay, <laughs> yeah. sorry. I was, I was at the church. <laughs> she brought us 27 new white linens, and we flipped it all, switched it all. The client never knew, yeah. and we couldn't have done that without you guys. I mean, I, mean, was I, was, awesome. I was there literally getting towels from the caterer and wiping off the tables at the same time I was like we can't put the linens on wet, wet tables. tables yeah and I'm like wax on wax offing and sweating and but right you know sometimes being in the industry so long I think can make you a little bit jaded and um it's always good to think about that the wedding day is one of the most special days in in a couple's life of course. really yeah, and, absolutely. and and we're all there to make it happen and and the more you think about that, the more you're going to be like, okay, let's make this happen. Like, right. It, and wedding planners, and, you know, kind of, I guess, going back to why it's important to have a wedding planner is you guys are more of the put out the fires <laughs> because there's right. always something going on. And it's so good to have somebody to have your back to make sure that things are going the way that you want them to go, or even if they're not, to where the couple's not noticing that Absolutely. things have um changed or been difficult or what have you yeah I mean if they wouldn't have had a planner mom wouldn't have known to she's at the church about to walk down the aisle she right. didn't know what was happening you right know? and that's why a lot of these venues do require planners so that they can help make those phone calls and make things happen but I mean 
event works has always been awesome to us and for and the experience of of I always tell that story when I do consultations and things <laughs> because I'm like listen what if it pours down rain you need 27 new white linens they might might not have the exact color or size or shade yeah. but we're going to get something there Gosh, you know I've, I so. wouldn't have even thought about that day probably <laughs> again unless you said that that's really cool right I do like that that's yeah. fun I mean there there are often times when that stuff does happen, you know? Yeah. And I mean, out of our control, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so what are some of the newest things EventWorks has to offer right now? Well, you know, we really try to kind of stay with the times and feel out our customers' needs and what people are looking for. So we've brought in some uh, our Stella black flatware, which is Love super that. cool. Yes. Um, it, we've been waiting for it and wanting it right um we have uh some new china our caleb which has like this edge to it which is super good it makes it so that things aren't just like sliding off your plate and so many people oh, are yeah, doing seen stations that. we haven't got to use it no yeah. i'm obsessed with this and so when you're doing stations or small plates you know you have the smaller plates but everything's kind of sliding, sliding. Off there's the a little side. juice or anything yeah. yeah it's got like a cool little lip, lip on it to it yeah, yeah. i'm always bringing in new pieces um you know new furniture Right. New flatware. We have some new chairs. Our Bentwood uh, blonde chairs are awesome. Yes, love those. Uh, and you have something that replaced everybody's favorite, the rattan. I think you rented it out till it fell apart. But yeah, <laughs> we did, we did, and we couldn't replace it, unfortunately. And everybody people still, still wanted it. For it but, um, there was like things hanging off. Like, That's fine. We'll just staple it you back. Just <laughs> kind of use some scissors and like cut it to the side. But uh, we have our Newport uh, teak and wicker set now, which yeah, is it's super beautiful. cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm it's, excited. To it's use like that. right in our showroom, right when you go I love into it. the showroom. It's right there. Which, uh, yeah, super excited. About no, that's that. awesome. So, I mean, obviously, we come into your showroom all the time, mm -hmm. but do people have to make an appointment? Do you prefer that? We prefer people to make okay. an appointment. I think that um, it's one of those things, sometimes when, when couples are in there, our planners are in there, it can be a really intimate experience. Right. Um, to where not everybody feels comfortable making these decisions with other people there, oh, you yeah. know. And, and when you're talking money and things mm -hmm. like that, too, it just gets – a little bit much so we we do like to have um people make appointments obviously they can walk in as well but it's just to that way you to can give them the attention everyone. yeah, yeah and, and the attention for sure and for that's sure. how like a lot of i mean vendors are i mean if you're gonna go try on dresses they want you to have an appointment <coughs> so they can give you you know the experience and the attention to talk about you know what you're looking for and pull the dresses and all that good stuff so absolutely i mean same concept for you i mean if they come in without an appointment and you have something, you know, right. maybe they really want to see something, but you really can't right. give your full attention. Or have attention. An another appointment or a meeting or something like that, then those things are getting put off for, you know, that bride's getting put off because somebody just walked in. Right. Although, yes. I mean, we want people to feel comfortable and of to course. see, but um, definitely yeah. prefer that. Absolutely. All right. So tell me where all event works are because they are like everywhere now. Yes. I can't yes. keep up. So we are um, in our region here on the coast. We are Myrtle Beach, Charleston and Savannah. Okay. And then we have Orlando and Jacksonville. Okay. And then we have uh, Atlanta, Birmingham and Nashville. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. And so Crush, the main is in Atlanta? In Atlanta. Right now? Yeah. They okay. have a larger selection um, there. Uh, which is, we're hoping that our crush here kind of takes off to where we really can develop it and get new items and, you know, just have a little yeah, here for yeah, sure. A little okay. bigger, but, um, but we're super stoked about it. And um, the Atlanta crush is going really well. And I mean, they, they do things like they've gone up to the Biltmore in North Carolina oh, wow. and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. we're a, uh, all over the place. Can you imagine driving from Atlanta? You're like, oh, okay, great. Yeah, let's That's bring awesome. in the specialty furniture. I love it. Well, I'm sure they don't really have a lot there. I mean, Asheville's small, you yeah. know? I mean, yeah. if you wanted something more custom. I mean, and it's not, how far of a drive is that? From Atlanta to Asheville? Yeah. I have no idea. Okay. I'm terrible. I don't think it's that far. I'm terrible. It's like distance. three hours. Yeah, I don't think it's terrible. Yeah, then it'd be harder if we did it, right? <laughs> right. So I know we all have our crazy stories, and it, and I'm going to ask you this, but it doesn't have to be from EventWorks. It could be through your whole career, but sure. like, so what's like one of the craziest things you've experienced or had a client or a couple? Do you a have wedding. any? And like a million. It's always hard to, <laughs> to think of them uh, when you're put on the spot. But uh, I often think about this one wedding I had 
when I was younger, it was in the early 2000s, and it was a Jewish wedding, and the mother and father, they walk the bride down the aisle, okay. right, on each side of yeah. her. And in this case, the the father had cheated on the mother with her best friend and, re- and married the mother's best friend. So oh. they hadn't talked in years. They didn't look at each other. And literally, like, I'm, I'm putting them together to walk her down the aisle, and they're looking in opposite directions. <laughs> and they oh, walk wow. her down the aisle and have to sit on opposite sides of the aisle. And then even in the dining room, they're on opposite sides. Like, they could not be near each other. <laughs> Which, I mean, if that <sighs> – well. can you imagine that happening? But it's – it's sad, but it leads hey, to... At least they stuck together and walked her down the aisle. Yeah, I mean, day. clearly yeah. their parenting was good. Yeah. Just their relationship wasn't, but... That one definitely takes the cake. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> For sure. Um, so what are some other events that EventWorks has had the honor to help put on sure, rental-wise? Sure, um, Well, obviously, you know, we do a ton of weddings and grand weddings and, right. and such, but we do... A lot of other events. Recently, we got to do the strongman competition here in Myrtle Beach. That was super cool. It was. It was. So they very, had to like very cool. They had to build. I remember you sending me a photo, but they yeah, literally we, had, we to, had build. to build like a five foot, six foot scaffolding. Which in our area it was our first time doing it. We were super excited. We brought in people from our Nashville or our Birmingham office, our Atlanta office, to help us because they had been doing those sorts of things for a it long executed. time. Yeah. Yeah. So. We, we built this five foot, six foot scaffolding, built a floor on it, then put a 40 by 70 tent on the beach on it. <laughs> it's like, OMG. it was, uh, it was super intense and the guys did such a great job and it was so fun for us. It, it's, it's fun to do different things like that because the guys get so pumped, you know, right. they're like, to break it up. Too. Yeah. No, for yeah. Sure. Uh, it did storm though at one point, And I believe the, um, oh, the event, uh, the people, because you can't be under a tent in lightning. Let's be real about that. Yes, right? <laughs> like, metal, metal people. And uh, I think they had to evacuate for a bit of time into the parking garage um, while the storm was going on. And we had multiple other tents out there too. But um, that was one that we just did that was uh, new and exciting. Um, we've done the chili cook-off, and which is coming up in September too, right. where we're putting up like 200 tents in it's just, wow. it's amazing what what you can do or, you know, whatever someone's vision is or event. Right. Um, our Nashville office just did Bonnaroo and whatever the country music festival is there. And uh, Do you guys do stuff with Boeing as well? In Charleston? We do, we do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the Georgetown Boat Show. And there are oh, a lot yeah, of tents that'll that co- that's there. coming up in October. That's always fun. Nice. That's why you should tents. always rent your tent early. Yeah. If you're having a wedding. <laughs> Especially in the spring and fall. Because <laughs> there's other <laughs> events other than weddings. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, um, yeah, we get to be a part of I think we just did the um, Jazz f- Festival at the Gilliard Center in Charleston. Oh, wow. Um, so we're kind of sprinkling event works everywhere. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> awesome. That's so awesome. Well, it was awesome to have you on here and talk well, about you. all these fun things. Here's some <laughs> um, crazy things of things that definitely took the cake uh, of your experience, which we've all experienced. Um, so thank you for coming on. So best way for people to find you, Instagram, Facebook, mm-hmm. I'm sure any social media platform. Um, Our website. Website, mm-hmm. yep. And that's EventWorks Rentals with right. an S. EventWorks with an S, Rentals yeah. with an S dot yep. com. Dot com, mm-hmm. exactly. Well, thank you for coming on and being a part of This Takes the Cake. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.